Alright, uh, so now let's uh, keep discussing about experiment. Alright, uh, an important task of, of uh, an experiment is to control extraneous variables. Um, that is, uh, any variable in the context of an experiment other than the independent and dependent variable that can explain the result. Right? And uh, for this variable, so, um, uh, it can make it difficult to separate the effects of an independent variable from the effects of uh, extraneous variables. Let me give you an example. So, for example, you're testing a drug. Uh, say the drug can improve um, uh, your uh, certain performance. Maybe um, you know, uh, athletes um, uh, performing in, uh, in a certain task. Right? And uh, to test um, this drug, um, you, of course, I uh, need to have uh, two groups. Uh, one is uh, experimental, one is control, and the experimental take the drug, the experimental, uh, no, the control group take what? The placebo, right? We're going to talk about that, but um, I think um, uh, this is um, uh, kind of like a common knowledge. So, <clears throat> and then after a period of time, like a month, um, uh, they compare the result, uh, see which group uh, performed better. <clears throat> so if um, uh, the drug uh, doesn't perform better than the placebo, then uh, the drug probably is no use, right? But in this case, what about if the researchers know uh, which group is taking what, right? So suppose I'm, uh, I'm the researcher and uh, I, when I, I myself uh, give uh, people the drug or the placebo, and I know who is taking the drug and who is taking the placebo. Then my body language, my uh, tones of the voice, when I give them the drug, my influence, you know, give them the hint, uh, you know, I'm taking the real drug or I'm actually taking the placebo. And that can be confounding, you know, a confound variable. That will influence them with the result. And that is one extraneous variable you need to control. Um, uh, the, the, the best way to control it is uh, double blind. So I will not know. The researchers will not know who is taking what. Right? So need to control it, hold it constant. Now let's talk about the experimental design. Uh, there are two designs between and within, and we uh, talk about this, but uh, uh, let's just review. So between participants or between subjects in uh, experiment, is each participant is tested in one condition. Um, in other words, uh, well, you need to go through random assignment. Some people will experience um, uh, experimental you know, condition and some other experiment the, the control condition. Uh, and uh, in other words, each person just experienced one condition. And uh, if it is between, then we need to do random assignment, right? Assigning participants to different conditions randomly. Uh, um, uh, how, do you do, how do you exactly do that? You can flip a coin, roll a die, or just use um, a random number generator. Now, one thing, again, um, I need to remind you uh, is um, uh, you need to understand the difference between random assignment and random sampling. So what's the difference? Um, uh, you, if you want to pause the video and uh, you know just uh, answer it to yourself and then uh, resume the video for answer. Uh, random assignment is when you got the participants already and uh, you want to divide it into two groups or three groups or whatever, that's you use a random assignment. Random sampling, on the other hand, is um, uh, when you want to get uh, a sample of participants from a population. In other words, a select of who will be in the study. Um, I usually go through random sample, but of course, on the other hand, um, I need to remind you in the, a study of psychology, we probably would never do that because um, it's too tough to uh, get the sample. You know, people always say no, so we just um, use uh, 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 general psychology students and give them extra credit. All right, let's talk about um, a treatment and control conditions. In the, the between them group uh, uh, experiment, sometimes it's not only um, uh, we just we're not only just um, doing experiment. We are doing um, we're testing some type of treatment, maybe drugs, maybe you know medicine, or maybe some certain um, you know a, a counseling method, you know teaching method for you know, I don't know depression, you know anxiety, whatever. So. The so treatment is an intervention intended to change people's behavior for better behavior or I don't know, mental status. Right? 
So to deter determine whether a treatment works, participants are, will, rand will be randomly assigned to either a treatment condition or control condition. And that, that, that's you know common knowledge. We, we sh at this point, you should know that already. Now, treatment condition is receive some treatment of interest, no problem. But control condition can be a little bit tricky, okay? Um, generally, speak, general, generally speaking, control conditions, um, people in this condition, they don't receive treatment. Uh, but um, there are different type of control condition, okay? First is um, a no treatment control condition. Right, control condition which participants receive no treatment whatsoever, not even a placebo. And uh, placebo, of course, um, you know, is a treatment lacks any active uh, ingredient or elements that should make it effective. So the idea is, treatment should improve the most. Placebo uh, later because of your placebo effect, right? And the people who don't receive treatment at all should um, um, uh, improve the least. Uh, and placebo effect imposes a serious problem for researchers who wants to determine whether a treatment works, of course. So how do you uh, 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 find out this, uh, you know, how much the placebo effect is, right? Of course, we have this placebo control condition. So placebo, uh, you know, control condition in which our participants receive a placebo. But remember, we also mentioned about um, a condition that don't receive uh, any placebo, right? Um, uh, so it's a true control condition. They don't receive anything. The thing is that we want to, first we want to see how much um, a placebo effect uh, works. You know, how much is the placebo effect? And second, um, the thing is this, I mean, you want to tell um, uh, people who say, uh, you know, you tell some people say, actually you are not going to receive any treatment. Now, Probably um, uh, they are going to uh, feel bad. They are going to feel nervous, even panic about it because um, uh, they will think, "Oh, I'm not going to receive a treat any treatment. I'm not going to get better." Right? But the thing is, actually, sometimes time is a a good healer. Right? Maybe given time, they are going to be well, uh, no matter what. But now you tell them, say, you are not going to receive any treatment. Um, that might um, threw them off, I mean, contaminated the, the result. Um, uh, they improve the least, and not because um, uh, they don't receive training, just because um, uh, they think, oh, I, I'm not going to get better. So, how do you solve this problem? Not giving them anything, but um, kind of like keep giving them some hope, right? And uh, people, um, uh, you know, they are really smart, um, uh, they think of a, a solution. That is called the wait list control condition. So instead of telling them you are not going to receive any treatment, tell them say, um, you will receive treatment like a month later. Okay, so um, uh, we will put you on the wait list. Just be patient. So in this way, they still give some hope. They think um, eventually they will receive treatment and they are, they are going to get better. But uh, while while they are on the wait list, um, uh, the experiment is already going on. Alright, so this pause here.